In this video, I'm going to be showing you Data Button, which is a platform that allows you to build as well as deploy real apps with natural language. To get started on the platform, it is super straightforward. You will be able to make a free account to try all of this out. What I'm going to say, I want to build out a directory that's specifically about AI tools that are geared towards developers. Once I have that, I'm going to go to continue and for the requirements. Now, this is going to be where you put in anything like documentation, user stories, requirements, quotes, all of that information you can just drag and drop within here. Now it is also optional, so I'm going to skip that step. And then for any design inspiration that you have, you can include them here. Here I included a few different screenshots of some websites that I thought had a good overall design. Next, the great thing with Data Button is it makes it really easy to add in authentication, database, payments, as well as storage. You have the option to choose between Firebase as well as Superbase. For payments, Stripe and Lemon Squeezy. And then for storage, there's Firebase, Superbase, AWS, as well as GCP storage. I'm going to be leveraging Superbase Auth as well as the Superbase database for our application since we're not going to be using payments or any object storage in this video. As soon as you go through those initial steps to create your application, you'll have a screen that looks just like this. Within here, the AI under the hood generated this to-do list for us. And you can click in within here, you can see the title as well as the description that will ultimately get sent to the AI agent. You do have the ability to edit all of this and to kick off the task, you can go ahead and click start task here. Before I kick this off, I just want to first show you the list of different tools that are available within the agent. So if I say, can you tell me about all of the different tools and how you can trigger them with prompts? Just to quickly touch on what the agent is capable of, it can read and write files, it can update code, install packages, test, read logs, it can list the different storage that you have, as well as access the context of this list here. Finally, it does also have the ability to research if it does need to search the internet for particular things, it can do that. And then finally, it can also deploy your application. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kick off the task to create the Tech Brutalist landing page for DevTool AI. The Tech Brutalist theme, that's going to be one of the design concepts that it pulled from those screenshots of those different websites that I provided with. What we'll see on the right hand side is we'll see the agent work through the different steps here. We see that it can read the files, it can write the code, and what this will do is it will just go through a loop of thinking through the different steps of what it needs to do to accomplish this broader overarching task. And once it's determined that it has met that goal of that task, it will present that solution to us. So now if I click to the preview tab, we'll be able to see what it generated for us. Here's the initial implementation of our homepage here. If I just scroll down and take a quick look at what it generated for us, Within here, we can also preview it on tablet, mobile, and you can also open up the preview in a new tab. If you click on over to overview, what you'll see is this app flow diagram. Now where this is helpful is to really have alignment on what the agent is actually creating. Because sometimes when the agent just goes off and you see it running and performing in the loop, sometimes not having that visibility can be difficult. But with this, it gives you a really clear visualization on how different UI components relate to one another, which pages share different components, as well as you begin to build out the backend, you'll likewise be able to see all of your different APIs and authentication and how different things relate to one another within here. Overall, it's a really helpful visualization just to give you an idea on what the agent is actually doing. Another new feature that they just added was this ability to send a preview to agent. So if I click this and I take an overall look at our homepage here, I notice that at the bottom here, there are some particular sections that don't look too great. Here I see that the text isn't too visible. I'm going to highlight that area, save it out. Now we have that context within the pane here. And what I'll say is I notice within the section that some of the text isn't visible. Let's make sure that the text is white, especially when over dark backgrounds. Now that it went through, I'll open up our application here and I'll just scroll down to that particular section. And now I see that it resolved that error. That can be really helpful, especially when building out the UI portion of applications is being able to send in the context of the particular page and just having that whiteboard that you can draw on to inform the agent. That can be easier in a lot of cases than trying to describe the problem because oftentimes the visual representation of whatever the issue is or whatever you're looking to update, it can in a lot of times be more helpful than trying to describe it within words. I've done this a number of times, especially for little UI bugs where something just isn't quite right, where if you send in that image to the large language model, it will return a better result than just trying to describe it 
with natural language where that might take a few prompts, whereas just sending it directly with the image, you'll get to what you want to do faster. Next, as soon as you're happy with the task that you have in progress, you can go ahead and mark it as done. At any point, you can go and kick off the next task. So the next task here is to set up Superbase authentication with login and registration. Now, anytime that the agent needs something from you, it will go and prompt you. So in this case, it will ask us for the Superbase project URL. So what you can do is you can head on over to Superbase and you can make a free account. I'm gonna go over to the dashboard here to go and create a new project. As soon as you create a new project, if you haven't used Superbase before, this is what the platform looks like. You'll have your database, authentication, storage, if you're using it, all within the left-hand sidebar there. And to connect to the project, we can click connect here. We can go over to app frameworks. Now there's a couple different ways on how you can get this information, but all that we'll need is that URL as well as that secret key. Now it looks like Superbase should all be set up. Now what you can do within the platform as well is simply deploy your application with just one click. You can go to the deploy button at the top, determine what the path you wanna have, and it will go start the deployment. And generally speaking, it just takes a few seconds. Now, alternatively, if you do wanna deploy this to a custom domain, you can head on over to settings, you can go to production, and you can put in your custom domain here, and you'll have the configuration instructions that you can walk through and use whatever domain that you'd like. Now, the other thing that I do wanna note with the platform is if you do wanna access the code at any point, you can go ahead, click to edit the code, and you'll be able to see all of the different components within here. Here is our page. We can go to the login, and you can go and edit everything within here, just like you would within a typical code editor as well. So now that we see that our application is deployed, within here, we have our login and register button. If I go over to the registration page, we can add in our name, email, as well as password. Password. Now, if you are using Superbase, the one thing that I do want to note is within the authentications tab here, this is going to be where you see all of the different users of your application. But one thing that I do want to note is if you are using email as an auth provider, now mind you, you can change this to Apple or Google or whatever it might be for your application, is if I go into email, I'm going to turn off the confirmation email and save that out because right now Superbase doesn't have the context of where our application is on Superbase. So if you're testing it out on the platform, this way it's not going to require and prompt you to authenticate through an email, which it otherwise would have done. Now, mind you, once you deploy this application to production and you are using Superbase, you can just go over to your URL configuration and you can update your site URL where you will be able to use the email authentication signup process like you typically see on other sites. Now that I'm happy with that stage, I'll go ahead and I'll mark that complete. And, and you can just begin to work through the to-do list of whatever you have within your application. Now that I have authentication set up, just to show you what that looks like within the app flow diagram, if I click on over to the login page, you'll see that we have this UI component and a similar thing for the register component. As you start to build out your application and there's a number of different pages, this goes without saying, it will be helpful to have that bird's eye view on what everything's doing. Also, at any point, what you can do is if you click the three buttons of a component, you can actually view the component or alternatively, you can explain the flow. If I click the explain flow button, what it will do is it will send a message into the agent for us and it will go and look through your application and give you a description of whatever it's doing. Overall, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you see how you can leverage Data Button to build out whatever you'd like. Data Button is probably one of the more advanced AI coders out there when building and deploying real apps. Whether you're a developer or not, just having access to all of these different tools and capabilities within one platform, you'll be able to build basically whatever you have in mind. And let me know what your thoughts are as well as what you're interested in building with Data Button within the comments below.